let us start this lecture with a thought process if the life in this beautiful earth will be extinct in future as expected by the researcher due to excess exploitation of natural resources by modern man then mother nature will try to restore her equilibrium so in the last lecture we are basically discussing about chemical equilibrium right and um, we also derived relationship considering uh, the gibbs free energy how to relate this kp with the gibbs free energy and uh, temperature and also the universal gas constant and also we express the equilibrium constant in terms of partial pressure and also the mole fraction right and today uh, we will take some example how to apply those thing to calculate the equilibrium so let us consider this example that is uh, one kilo mole of oxygen attains equilibrium in a reactor as per chemical reaction O2 going to the 2O2 and we will have to determine the mole fraction of O and O2 at <coughs> three different cases I have considered one is 3000 Kelvin pressure is one atmosphere pressure next is 300 Kelvin and pressure one atmosphere pressure and the third one is 3000 Kelvin and pressure 5 atmosphere. What I am doing here, I am basically changing the temperature and changing the pressure, that is the idea. Okay. So, if you look at solution, this is basically the reaction is O2 going to 2O and also if it is equilibrium, that means it can uh, 2O can combined may be coming back to O2, right. So, uh, if you look at, we are basically interested to find out, to find, if you look at x O2 and x O, the mole fraction of the O and O2, right. So, what we will have to do, we will have to use the same thing, eh, right, that is K P, if you look at the at chemical equilibrium condition we know that k p is equal to e minus delta z t 0 divided by r u t right ok and we will have to also determine what, what is delta z at temperature for example we are considering the case of one only right this is t is equal to 3000 kelvin and p is equal to one atmospheric pressure right that means this t this t is what 3000 kelvin right this will be 3000 kelvin and ru is your universal gas constant so, how we will calculate this delta G T naught, how we will do? If you look at this is N O G I T I O, actually this is not O, right. And at the standard condition, what is your standard condition? 1 atmosphere pressure, right, minus N O 2 g o 2 t standard condition and e, uh, we need to and these are what is that gives free energy or give functions at standard condition right gives free energy at stp right standard temperature and pressure now from where i will get these values Is it at standard temperature and pressure? No, this G naught, right, okay, will be function of temperature also, right. This will be not standard temperature, right. It will be at T and standard pressure. Is it okay? 
yes or no right the different temperature it will be different values okay therefore the t is given here otherwise it could have been 298 kelvin okay are you getting now this from where i will get i will have to go to the table right let us uh, look at the table here in the table generally cp values will be given h hf reference will be given hf not will be given right and this is gf right values at various temperature keep in mind that 3000 3000 kelvin it will be 54327 right kilojoule per kilomole right and it is uh, 300 kelvin it will be higher values and o2 being stable species therefore it will be zero right so in this case what it would be 2 the number of moles is what this one is this is your 2 moles 2 into 54327 is equal to 108654 kilojoule right so we will have to find out what is this kp kp will be e minus 108 <coughs> 654 and this is basically kilo joule and ru is 8.314 kilo joule right per kelvin into 3000 i will get this is 0 0.01283 right so, this is uh, basically you can say that uh, this is your equation 1, right. And uh, for this above chemical reaction, this is my chemical reaction. So, what I am using for this to evaluate the equilibrium uh, composition that is uh, what will be Kp then? Kp will be p naught by p reference pressure reference pressure is atmospheric pressure so i am just writing p a why i am changing now p a because this not o is there you may get confused therefore i am changing to p a okay square divided by p o 2 p a right yes or no yes or no right so that is equal to if you look at p in o p o is equal to x o into p yes or no this i know this is o not not okay o so i can write down x o square p divided by p a whole square into x O2 P by P A. So, that is coming X O square divided by X O2, this will cancel it out. So, P by P A, right. This is let us say equation 2. Now, keep in mind that K P value we know, this is the K P value, that means this equation, this is known this is known right and that is equal to something for this case you know 0. Point, uh, 0. 0.01283 this is known right this is known now this x o is known it is not known x o 2 is not known p is known in this case what is p this p is one atmosphere pressure right the case is this one na p is one atmosphere pressure so this is p a so it can be cancel it out but we will be keeping it general because we will have to look at also effect of pressure okay now two unknown are there one equation how we will solve 
for that what we will do we will have to use this summation of x i is equal to 1 that is nothing but x o plus x o 2 is equal to 1 right. That means, x o 2 is equal to 1 minus x o this is equation 3. Now, we will combine equation 2 and 3 and try to solve it. Okay. So, by combining equation 2 and 3 right am I right 2 and 3. So, what I will get I will get basically k p is equal to x naught square into 1 minus x naught right in place of x o 2 I am putting 1 minus x p by p a right is not it? Is it right? So, what we will do? I can write down this as x naught square p by p a right uh, plus plus k p x naught minus k p is equal to 0 yes or no? The let us say this is equation basically 4 and this equation we can solve because it is a quadratic equation we know the solution. What is that? That will be x is equal to x naught, x naught means x o okay, not not o and minus you know what is that? It would be minus uh, k p is it minus k p right minus k p plus minus k p square 4 p by p naught into minus k p right. So, divided by 2 into p by p naught yes or no. So, I will get basically minus k p plus minus root over k p square plus 4 p by p naught k p divided by 2 p by p naught. So, in this equation if you look at all are known k p is known right this is known p by p a naught is known. So, you can do very easily if I will substitute those values for case Okay, I can write down this is 5 for substituting values for case for i right i is what t is equal to 3000 Kelvin and p is equal to 1 atmosphere pressure. So, therefore, p by p naught is equal to 1 and k p if you look at we got 0 0.012 3. So, for that case what you will get? You will get x naught is equal to 0 0.107 and x naught to 0 0.893 right. These values you are getting. Now, if you look at the composition of O2 is very very less even 3000 Kelvin ok. Are you getting 3000 Kelvin temperature low. Now, I will consider the case 2 right for case 2 what is that T is equal to 300 Kelvin. So, for that right delta uh, and pressure of course, 1 atmosphere pressure then similarly p by p naught will be 1 and delta g naught if look at delta g t temperature at 300 Kelvin that we are calculating. What it would be? This will be basically 2 into g o t 
not at 300 Kelvin. So, that happens to be these values 2, 3, 1, 6, 2, 8. Okay. So, we will just use that values is equal to 2 into 2, 3, 1, 6, 8, 2 is equal to 4, 6, 3, 2, 5, 6. And if I know these values that uh, you know K p you will be getting what will be the K p values and you will find that x naught K p values you will get for this, this you will get K p values 2 into 22 into 10 power t minus 81 and you will get x will be 4 point 6 9 10 power t minus 41 and x o 2 will be 0 0.99. So, these values you are getting. What does it mean? That means, at 300 Kelvin there is no dissociation at all and this approximately equal to 0, this approximately equal to 99999 maybe that that goes on you know uh, what you call 69 uh, let us say 7 9 3 something it goes you know 41 that means this is approximately equal to 1 no decomposition 298 kelvin nothing will happen you know you can assume that but still why i am saying this still there will be little decomposition that is you cannot measure so it is negligibly small are you getting? So, now we will consider for case 3 temperature 3000 Kelvin and pressure 1 atmospheric. Ah, no, 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 this is 5 atmospheric pressure, right. Now, if you look at we have already done that, right. K p values we know, K p will be same, right. So, K p values will be 0 0.01283 and what will be uh, x naught, x naught will be 0 0.048 and x naught 2 will be 0 0.95104, right. So, what is happening when you compare? That means, this x o was higher at one atmosphere pressure and it is lower at this and vice versa. That means, x o 2 is higher at higher pressure, right. P upon P will be 1 upon 5? Or? Yes, P by I think P by P a will be 5 because P is 5 and this is this thing, right. Okay. Now, let us summarize these things data and see whether we can you know observe anything in this. So, let us consider the you know I have taken another case also 2500 Kelvin and 1 atmosphere pressure right. At 300 Kelvin 1 atmosphere pressure what is happening to O? O is almost what you call 1 and this is approximately 0. Okay. And when I increasing to 2500 Kelvin keeping the pressure 1 atmospheric 0 0.985 and 0 0.15 and when I increase further the O2 again reduce because it is decomposed into the O 0 0.107. Right. What is the interpretation you can do? That means, when temperature increases O2 breaks into O because the reaction is endothermic you know right and the reaction proceeds in endothermic direction. Endothermic means basically O2 is going to to O right. So, this is the direction in which it is going that does not mean no reaction is occurring in opposite direction it is occurring, but this side is more. So, therefore, you are getting what you call decomposition of the species right. 
that means O is more. Right. Now, let us look at consider this case, these two cases like 1 atmosphere pressure and 5 atmosphere pressure. Right. Let us say that what we are observing like here, if it is pressure is increase, this is what you call uh, this is decrease O2 is decomposes less, right? it is not dissociated that much, right? O2 remain uh, not dissociated to that extent what is occurring at one atmosphere pressure. Right? And of course, similarly the O is uh, reduced with the increase in pressure. Right? Now, when P increases, it suppresses the dissociation. Right? In other words, of O2 as O is combined to form the more that means the reaction if you look at in this way it is, but it is predominant in this direction to O is going to the O2 right is more predominant at the pressure right. So, uh, can you really observe anything that means it is whenever the temperature increases the reaction proceed in this react this uh, you know reaction in a forward direction predominantly as compared to the backward direction and when pressure increases opposite way and if i change the concentration right okay at the equilibrium what will happen it will also change right and if i summarize this thing what do you observe? Are you observing something? When you disturb the equilibrium, it tries to regain. It tries to regain. And as I told in the my opening remarks from you know this thing that mother nature also will try to get back the equilibrium what it was, right. So, that uh, this observation was made and stated by a scientist known as Lee Chatelier, right. And his principle is when, whenever any system at equilibrium is subjected to change of either concentration or the volume or the temperature or the pressure, any one of them, right? Then system readjusts itself to a new equilibrium to counteract partially the effect of change. It's not the total effect, okay? Right? For example, you might be knowing when we are invaded right, by the let us say uh, maybe Greek or the Muslim or the Hoon, then we try to resist. In the beginning, we might have lost the equilibrium, but later on we re-establish the equilibrium, yes or no. But unfortunately, today there is a cultural invasion our culture is not being spoiled by the all invaders, keep intact, we have kept intact. But today without our knowledge, there is a cultural invasion to this country, to the market forces, but we are not aware. If we are aware, then we will try to regain our equilibrium. So, I would urge upon you people to look at this thing. This is of course, chemical equilibrium, but we should also look at it, right. That means, whenever a system in equilibrium disturb, it will adjust itself to oppose the effect of change, right? And that we call it as a equilibrium nature. As and this is this is the physical laws, and we are all subjected to physical laws. So also our mind, right? So therefore, we need to re-establish our equilibrium by opposing the cultural invasion which is spoiling our country at this moment. Okay. So. That means, any change in status quo prompts an opposing reaction in responding to it. Right? So, therefore, uh, we need to do and, and in the next lecture, I will find out how we can uh, carry out this analysis of finding out equilibrium composition in a systematic manner. Right? And then I will take an example. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we will stop over here.